Well, here we are. Iterated integrals. Uh, this one would be called, of course, a double integral in the English language because there are two integration symbols and two variables. And we will later on look at some triple integration. And there are certainly, uh, it's likely that there are applications for more, but we're going to look at doubles for quite a bit now. And I just wanted to tell you, like, the purpose of this video is um, to look at just evaluating it. Can we do the computation? It does not take much to compute uh, a double integral if you have the ability to integrate a definite integral. Um, but I want to make sure you know how to read the notation. And then the meaning of the boundaries or limits of integration and these variables in this particular order um, is going to be saved for later. Okay, I'm just going to say not now because we're not going to do that in this video. That's coming up soon though. All right, so let's look at our double integral. First thing you need to know is that there's an implied order of operations or grouping symbol here. And it could be written or drawn in like this. This tells us what the variable is. And that means these boundaries are y equal boundaries. y equals 1 to y equals 4. That would make x the constant when we do the integration. So now it comes down to, uh, remember, other people have to read your written work, how you organize it. It's possible to integrate this off to the side and then input the information into you know, the next step here. Um, if you're going to use an equal symbol, make sure that what comes next is actually equal to this. Don't just throw the equal sign out there because it feels like it's what a math person would do. So I'm going to ignore or hold off on the 0 to 2 for a moment, and we'll put the dx in later. If y is the variable, this antiderivative is y squared divided by 2. So you have x squared multiplied by y squared divided by 2. And it's a definite integral where y is evaluated from 1 to 4. And this is just a Western notation we use for, for definite integrals. And then later we'll come with respect to x. And then we get to our fundamental theorem of calculus. 0 to 2. Um, 4 squared is 16 over 2 is 8. So you have 8x squared. You'll find that maybe I should have left the fraction there. And minus, if y is 1, we're going to get 1 half x squared. And those are indeed like terms from 0 to 2, um, 7 and 1 half or you can call it 15 halves x squared. And now we've resolved this into a first semester calculus problem. The integral of x squared is x to the third power divided by 3. Yes, there'll be some reducing that happens. The values because this says x, that makes these x equals boundaries. So from when I say 0 to 2 here, it's not unusual to write this in. You might notice that I did that here as well. Um, when we're juggling various, um, well, various variables, this chapter, you'll see that there are about eight or nine variables that we're going to be using. You might want to label this every time so you don't substitute incorrectly. Um, 3 goes into 15 five times, um, we get 5 over 2, and we get uh, um, 2 to the third minus 0 to the third, ultimately leaving us with 8 over 2 is 4, 4 times 5 is 20. Again, what does it mean? Not now.
We're just doing a calculation. All right, now, let me show you two variations. I'm just gonna go through these calculations much more quickly. This is called the order of integration. I'll write it later. I've now switched the order of integration, but these limits are in their original form. This says x, so that makes this x equals, and this says y, that makes those y equals. That'll be significant later. So the first antiderivative, zero to two, is going to be x squared is the variable part of the expression. We're going to get x cubed over 3 times the constant y. x goes from 1 to 4. We'll integrate with respect to y later. And we're going to evaluate this and get from 0 to 2, 64 thirds y minus one-third y. All right, so that's what we're up to so far. Now, scratch paper, 64 thirds minus one-third is 63 thirds, which is 21. So we're going to be integrating from zero to two, 21y with respect to y. And just a note, that says y, so that makes this y equals also. And integral of y is y squared divided by two. And we're gonna evaluate from y is zero to y is two. 21 has two squared minus zero squared that's 4 over 2 is 2 times 21, 42. You will note, if you check the previous problem, that we have a different solution. One more quick calculation here, and then a little resolution on the project. Well, I do apologize if my video is off by a little bit. Too bad we don't have more production time. All right. Dx, dy. These limits of integration have now been reversed as these have been. So that makes this x equals and makes this y equals. Let's go through the calculations. I'm going to say them, but I'm going to go rather quickly. Um, x is the variable x cubed over 3 times y uh, dy. And x is going to go from 0 to 2. And I'm going to write this way because space is a limit ding factor on my paper also. 2 cubed is 8 over 3. 0 cubed is 0. You're going to get from 1 to 4, 8 thirds y with respect to y. These are y equals boundaries or limits of integration here. We integrate again. 8 thirds thirds y squared divided by 2 is the antiderivative. 2 goes into 8 four times, right? y goes from 1 to 4. So we get 4 thirds y squared from one to four, so let's crank this out here. Four squared is 16 times four is 64. 64 thirds. And minus one squared, which is minus four thirds. That would be 60 thirds, which is 20. Now, I think that number sounds familiar. 
Again, you may have to be pausing and rewinding since my paper scrolling seems to need some improvement. But let's round this video off really quickly with just a little observation. The first problem, when integrated, gave us 20. When we switched only the order of integration, it's called, the order of integration, but not the limits, we got a different value. When both the order of integration and the limits were switched, we got the same value as the initial problem. And so let me just point out two conclusions we can uh, one we can draw, and one you'll have to find out later. All right, let's get the hand out of the way. If you switch the order of integration only, dy dx versus dx dy, we don't expect it to be the same. There may be exceptions to this. So I'm going to just put quotes around this. But you can't just switch those and hope for the same value. Uh, remember, hope is not a strategy. It's good to have, but it's not a strategy in and of itself. If we switch both the limits, all right, the book calls these limits of integration. Remember, integrations come from limits of sums. Uh, the limits of integration, and we switch the order of integration. In this example, they were the same, but you're going to find out later, um, if I ask if these are the same, I'm going to say, not always stay tuned. Catch you later.